Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. So a while ago I watched a really good lecture on YouTube by uh, Dan Galbart called Creative Solutions to Impossible Engineering Problems, where he goes over well, exactly what's in the title. A few examples of seemingly impossible engineering problems that you could never solve, and then proceeds to explain their uh, fairly obvious and simple solutions. Um, all except for one. In the middle of the lecture, he says, or proposes the question, how would you design a magnet that could attract aluminum and copper? And anyone who's had any amount of education at all, you know, would at first glance say that's impossible. I've got a magnet right here, picks up steel, we learned this in preschool, but aluminum and copper, they're not ferromagnetic, you can't, can't attract them. So maybe you have an electromagnet. Now, he demonstrates one of these such devices in the lecture, and we'll look at how this works in a moment, uh, where, you know, if I apply an alternating current through this coil, it's going to attract steel. This is to be expected. But those of us with a little, uh, a little more physics education might know that if we were to take uh, something like aluminum or copper and apply a alternating magnetic field through it, uh, what we would see is actually repulsion. Uh, and this is because of Lenz's law. And we'll look at that in a minute. The crazy thing is, on this side over here, this is what he shows in the lecture with his device. If I get another piece of aluminum or copper, it's a very subtle effect, but if I hold it close and then uh, switch on the magnet, it actually attracts. I'll let go and it will fall. And this is no funny business here. It's not like this has got some weird aluminum alloy with a little bit of, little bit of iron in it. It really is attracting the, uh, the aluminum. I can get this piece of copper over here, hold it close, and it will get pulled, pulled towards the, uh, the end of the magnet. So what's going on here? Because this is the thing. In the lecture, he explains all the other uh, engineering problems except for this one. He says, we don't have time for this one, so try and figure it out at home. And so that's sort of what I've done. I found some answers online, uh, some of which he's posted on other YouTube channels, um, and then made one myself just to show that it could be done. And it really is unintuitive, but I wanted to make a quick video sort of explaining how this works as best I can because it is kind of, you know, outside of my scope, but it's super cool and hopefully someone will find this interesting. So let's take a look. So as the first hint, let's take a look at the ends of this device I've made. The end where I showed it's repelling aluminum, it's just, you know, a piece of steel. This was made just out of a steel rod. It's got a coil of some, some pretty uh, thin magnet wire wrapped around it. The other side where we're getting attraction, this is what we've got. A copper ring inlaid in this steel. So for some of you, that may be enough to figure it out. Uh, I know for me, it certainly wasn't. So let's look at what's going on here. Okay, so let's draw out what's happening inside of this thing. Like I said, the majority of this device is just a steel rod around which I've wrapped a bunch of magnet wire and created a coil here. Now, if this was it, it would be fairly straightforward. You would just you know, have a magnetic field uh, generated in this by, you know, I guess it's, it's N, number of turns, the permittivity of the material, I, and then L, uh, the length of the coil. And that's the strength of the field. Because I is uh, alternating sinusoidally, B is also going to be alternating the same way. And if you were to hold a piece of aluminum or copper or something like that up here, something that wasn't ferromagnetic, uh, Lenz's law would say we would induce an opposite uh, EMF in here, which would induce an opposing magnetic field and these things would repel. This is, this is sort of the, uh, 
the intuitive argument to this is what people would think of when, when you'd say, well, you can't make an electromagnetic electromagnet that attracts aluminum or copper because this is the interaction that happens. But what we've done on the other side is like I showed, we've got a little ring of copper. So if this is a section view, got something like this where the shaded area is copper. And what we have happening is, you know, just like if you were to hold some, you know, one of these two materials out here, when we have this magnetic field generated by the solenoid passing through this, this loop, because that's what this is, it's a, it's a round loop of copper, it induces, Lenz's law, a current going the opposite direction, which is going to make an opposing magnetic field. It's press fit in here, it's not like it's going to force itself out or anything. But here's, here's the tricky bit. So the current driving the solenoid is just line voltage, right? So we'll this is it's some it's some sinusoid, sine of you know omega t. It's 60 hertz, right? Lenz's law specifically, the term that we're 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 looking at says that the induced current is the time derivative of the flux uh, passing through the material. So it's the derivative. The derivative of sine, if our if our current, you know, waveform is sine, is cosine. So I'll draw this a little larger over here. If our driving current and hence driving magnetic field looks like this, the only difference is going to be the y-axis. The current and hence magnetic field induced and occurring in this little, this is like a little sub solenoid, right? Because you can call it, this is a coil, it's a one turn around a core of steel. What's happening here is the derivative or the cosine. So something like that. That's not exactly 90 degrees out of phase, but you get the idea. So what we get on the output here is, you know, we've got field lines from the main solenoid right here. Those could be leaking out the side, right? You've got some coming out of here. And you've got, you're going to have some coming out of the middle as well. But also coming out of the middle, we're going to have these other field lines generated by this coil, the EMF in this coil. And those are going to be 90 degrees out of phase. They interact in some weird way in front of the uh, face of the, the solenoid here which I couldn't really draw by hand. But the point is we have some lines which are the, uh, some lines which are acting as sine waves, some which are cosine waves, and maybe at some point they're at 90 degrees to each other. So what does the resultant field look like if we have this cosine and this sine and they're orthogonal? You get a rotating magnetic field. So the resultant field from these two flip-flopping fields, which you know the, ar the arrows are going like this, right? Because it's flipping at 60 hertz, and they're 90 degrees out of phase. Your resultant field is just a loop, and you know this is revolved. So what you actually end up getting is a inwardly rotating toroidal field in front of this the solenoid, or at least that's my understanding. And now it sort of starts to make sense why you would get these pieces to be attracted, because if this is our piece that we're holding in front of it, you'll notice the size of this is kind of critical. If we size this such that, you know, we have our areas over here where you're getting a rotating field like this, and only, or the majority of the part that's interacting with the field is only getting that inward uh, directed field, Lenz's law, for a third time, comes back, and it's going to produce a force opposing these field lines trying to curve into it, and so it will hence get pushed towards the face of the, the magnet here. So this actually doesn't work if we get a big piece. That was sort of the trick here. This does not attract a large piece, but if I use a 
small piece that does attract. It's because somewhere above the copper ring here, you're getting an, an, an interaction between the two, the sinusoidal field and the cosine field, where they're sort of superimposing to make a rotating field, and that rotating field's dragging the metal towards the face. So I don't know if, I, if I've explained that at all appropriately, but that's my understanding of it. And I thought that was a super, super tricky and clever little way of, uh, of, of solving this problem. You know, it might be a little sneaky because there are caveats like, you know, the size is important and, and whatnot. But if you would initially tell someone, make a magnet that can attract aluminum and copper, you'd say, you can't do it. That's not how physics works. Well, if you're clever, you can make something that gets the job done. So really great lecture. Really enjoyed getting to think that one over, and I'll, I'll link everything in the description. You should go check it out. Dan Gilbert's the best, but we knew this already. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.